What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. The gentleman in the quote unquote hot seat, which is what I just named it right it's now. It's not really Young hot. Young Way though. Koo yeah. uh, is sitting here, Falcons kicker, and someone who I think has the best hair on the team. Mm. It's it's very rarely out of place, which I find fascinating. So my intro question to you is this. Have you ever won best hair in high school? And if not, why were you robbed? <laughs> I didn't have this haircut in high school. Oh, oh really? So it's only yeah. late to the cool hair game. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. What type of haircut did you have? In high school? It yeah. Was, it was a lot shorter. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. See, every, I feel like every guy I went to high school with when, because I, I feel like we probably were in high school around the same yeah. time in like mid 2010s ish. Yeah. Uh, everybody had the bowl cuts. Yeah. Like that was like in the middle school freshman year. They had that, you know, that like uh -huh. Justin Bieber cut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah the flow your hair. going. But uh, <laughs> I didn't have that. Uh, <laughs> mine was shorter. Yeah. But. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Arthur Smith who said when y'all did the Atlanta Eats video, mm -hmm. he called you not the face of the franchise, the hair of the franchise. Mm. Does yeah. that sound like something he would do? Because yeah, I, I think he did do. I think he did tell say that on. He, he on did the, say <laughs> something like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Does he call you that often, or was it just in that moment? I uh, I wear my hat a lot around him, so that was the only time the hair was confident. It's it's just crazy because. The man kicks the game-winning field goal against Carolina. Yeah. Gets tossed off on a bunch of offensive linemen's shoulders, throws the helmet off, and in every picture, it's like straight out of the it was hair salon. Fantastic. I promise this will not be the entire interview. I swear. <laughs> About that moment, though, have you seen someone like, uh, I don't even, I think it was even our social team did a side-by-side -side of that photo. I don't know if you've seen it. It was after, it, you're up on their mm -hmm. shoulders and you're throwing the helmet, and it's a like renaissance painting. Yeah, I saw like, that. Yeah, that, uh -huh. was that was so funny. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Spot on. Um, okay, so as someone who's never done it, when you're in that moment and the game is on the line and there's 70,000 people screaming for you to succeed or fail, um, do you still get nervous? Did you ever get nervous? Like, do you, has that kind of worked out of you? Like, what, like, take us inside your mind when those moments are happening. Um, I, th I would say I was definitely like more nervous beginning of my career for sure mm -hmm. but i still get nervous i think it's good nerves so like i feel like if you don't get nervous like you know you don't really care you mm -hmm. know I, I feel like if you care it's normal to get the butterflies on right. game day and um you you know visualize those moments as a kicker um but i don't really try to get caught up in all that external stuff you know like the fans and all that that's um kind of fans obviously if i'm watching a football game as a fan i'm going to ride those you know emotional mm -hmm. roller coasters yeah. right but as a person who's like all right like i'm kind of i catch myself sometimes I'm like okay they scored a touchdown it's like okay well and i was like oh no i gotta go kick a ball so like <laughs> i need to lock in here you know so i try to detach myself emotionally from the game so i can stay locked in on my on my process um so at the net i'm just kind of in my own world so um you know we have those um press box or the mm. suites right next oh, to yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the right. luxury right next suites, to the sideline. Yeah. I might, I don't know, it seemed like an asshole, but I just kind of sit there <laughs> and I ignore everybody. It's uh -huh. not that like I'm, you know, trying to be mean, but I just try to be in my own world in a in my zone. So yeah, yeah. you're just making sure like that you, everything is zeroed in on the moment. Right. Now, do you? I've heard this before from people that like they are are so locked in that they can't even hear. Is that kind of like how you are or can you still when you're out in the middle of the field and it's loud and people are screaming like is is it a situation where you can still hear that because I know some people like disassociate so much that it's not, not even like that. Yeah, it kind of becomes like white noise mm. for me. Um I try to just think about the stuff that I think about out here kicking and practicing, you know. Um thinking about the snap, my timing, the hold and what I'm going to look at and my steps and my angles and stuff like that. So all the other stuff just kind of becomes white noise. Do you know right when it leaves your foot that it's good? Um, most of the time, yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Did 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 you know it against Carolina? Yeah, I I looked up and as soon as I saw where it took off, I I knew. So oh. that was a good feeling. Do those moments ever get old? You've done that several times now. Uh, I love it. No, it, <laughs> it never gets old. I, you know, uh, that's 
that's what we work for. And when we get an opportunity to win, you know, it's a great feeling. Speaking of does it ever get old? So I don't know if you remember this, but last year, the I think if I remember correctly, and people don't quote me on this, but if I remember correctly, your game winner against the Giants was your 70th field goal as a Falcon. I think that may have been right. I'm not entirely sure. But I remember after that game, I ranked your what I thought to be your top five field goals as a Falcon. And I asked you, and it was funny because our ranking was exactly the same, which I was really proud of like for myself. Okay. <laughs> but I'm curious to know if it's changed since then, including kind of like, what we just saw against Carolina. So do you want me to recap what the five were? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so the number five, sending to overtime in Tampa Bay in 2019. Okay. Um, number four, 52 yarder versus Tampa Bay in 2020, which at the time I think was your longest. Okay. Okay. Um, it may still be. I'm actually not sure. Okay. Um, number three, game winner versus Miami in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, the debut 37 yard field goal versus the saints in 2019. Mm. And then number one, the game winner versus the giants, the 40 yarder in 2021 Okay, was number one. Um, yeah, I would say they, you know, changed. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, at the time I probably didn't have enough. I still don't have enough, uh, game winners to ha- cover my top five. But, <laughs> um, I would definitely keep the first one as a Falcon mm-hmm. in New Orleans. It was good. Cause we also won. Right. Um, that one is good. Um, I, I gotta add the game just, you know, oh, yeah. Just had yeah. Against Carolina. Crazy game. So, Wild um, game yeah. for sure. Have uh, you ever been a part of something quite like that? Um, I don't know. Not, I don't think that crazy, yeah. You know, but we won, so I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> keep that on my top five. Um, I guess the Giants was really special for me because my um, middle school, high school coach who taught me how to kick, um, kick a football, really. Mm. Um, he was at the game. So. I'm glad you brought that up because that's actually a line of questioning that we had right. for the podcast. Peter Late. Simpier, is that how you say his last yeah. name? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he was at the stadium that day because you went to high school and everything in, in uh, New Jersey, right? right? Um, and he kind of helped you kind of kick. And I, I think he was even quoted on our website saying yeah. that that was one of the best moments of his life. Uh, to be able to do that with him, you have friends and family in the stands um, must have been a, a pretty powerful moment, especially when you're so close to home. Yeah, I mean, I grew up 20 minutes from that stadium, and um, I think like 85% of my high school was Giants fans. Mm-hmm. But he, he taught me how to kick, kick a football, you know, in my freshman year in high school. Um, and uh, he was a special person for me because I kept in touch with him every, you know, one, at least once a week, even after I graduated high school. Oh, um man. And we kept in touch and he always checked on me no matter what, you know, um, it would be the same questions, but we always talked, mm-hmm. you know, it was just, Hey, how you doing? And we just talked about it two days ago, but I'm good. How you, you know, how you, <laughs> you know nothing changed in two days, but, um, but, uh, that, you know, he was a really special person. Um, his, uh, heart, his kindness and his generosity to just coach kids. You know, he didn't mm-hmm. take any payments. He just did that for the love of the game and, help the kids out and there's a community of um kickers that were coached by him and we all you know kind of kept in touch and he kind of left that with us so and he just he just recently passed passed in the spring right Right. Mm -hmm. was it the type of thing that he could watch you on tv let's say after it like missed or something like oh there it is like he just knows you so well yeah he always called i have tons of voicemails you know (laughs) just talking what happened this and that but uh yeah, I you know I think now he left that with us where you know it left for us to stay in touch with everybody. That's one thing that he taught mm-hmm. me for sure. That's fantastic. Do you have any memories from a high school young way b- with him that you you like telling? Any stories? Um, yeah, I mean, it was just the same things all the time. Where he would be in the parking lot just waiting for me to come, you know, and we would <laughs> go out in the morning, and he was always early. Um, and you know, he would always hold the ball for me. Okay. Even at that age. Cause he, he loved seeing it from that angle and he ah. loved to feel it. And, um, 
you know, I was like, no, it's really okay. You don't really have to get down there. You know, it was taking a little bit longer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's okay. It's like, right. I don't, I feel bad, like yeah. having you go down and hold the balls and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, he insisted and he always did that. So, um, that's, wow. that's for me. Um, it's one of the things I always remember. So you were, uh, you were really into soccer, right? Mm -hmm. So give us your, your kind of football origin story. It sounds like some guys asked you to punt at recess or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> I grew up playing soccer. And when I moved to New Jersey, um, I picked up soccer naturally. I started playing that first, but then um, I got into football um, mm. during a lunch recess. Or you know, they were like, "Hey, I know you play soccer. Like, kick this off so we can, you know, twin touch football, whatever." Mm. And I just booted it, and they were like, "Hey, you should come out." <laughs> and, you know, hey, why don't you come yeah, play why don't on you this? Sign up. So then um, that's how I signed up for football, um, and that's how I really like made a lot of friends that otherwise I wouldn't have. You know, right. um, especially at that time when I didn't speak English, I was um, trying to find my way in a yeah. new community and new, you know, new school, new everything. So that helped me. But um, I fell in love with like the physicality of football. Um, so it over time, I guess, a couple of years before high school, we chose to go with football because um, number one, I loved it a lot more than soccer. And mm -hmm. To my middle school coach, explained to my dad like, "Hey, like he has a future in this." And mm -hmm. my dad was at the time, he was like. What are you talking about? He's just kicking a ball. Like, <laughs> right. you know, Someone's gonna pay for that. Yeah, we didn't know like, <laughs> what that was, so it was really um, uh, big for my middle school coach to come to my house and explain to my parents, like, oh, "Hey, yeah. like he can, you know, go to yeah. college for this, and maybe, you know, even farther." So, um, yeah, that's that's how I got into football. That's interesting, and it, it's interesting too that you talk about how football kind of connected you to other people because you moved to the United States at a very like formative age, mm -hmm. right? Like 12, 13 right. years old. Um, walk us through what that was like to, to come here. And you said, didn't speak English. Like, I feel like that's probably a lot for a, a mm -hmm. young 12, teenager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have like a couple stories where like my first day in school, um, I was assigned to all the classes with like uh, another Korean kid so he can translate things for me. Oh. So I remember that first day, like I went to a gym class and all the kids are coming up like, you know, there's a new kid in school. It's like, hey, my name's this. Nice to meet you. Like, welcome. And I just remember like nodding, like smile on my face, right? <laughs> like the whole day. And I would go home and I'm like, mom, I have no idea what happened. Like, you know, like, like, I don't so know what they said I, to me. Yeah, so I remember that. Um, and I was in ESL. So um, I was with maybe five kids that just came and they mm. didn't speak English either. So we were going through the similar things. But as I got into sports, um, club soccer or football, whatever it was, um, I started to make friends outside of that right. like ESL mm -hmm. or classroom environment. And that helped me big time in terms of like emerging myself into a new culture and making new friends. Um, and uh, I was going to practice one day with a bunch of friends and uh, I didn't really know how to phrase a sentence of like, hey, what do you guys do like on the weekends? Like, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, you guys want to hang out? Yeah. Because I was at home, like, you know, shooting hoops or whatever, but like, I didn't really know how to like ask that. Like, I don't mm. know what they do here. You know, right. it's a new country. Like, I don't know. So I was in the car and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I was like, I'm bored. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, right, right, like, right now? I'm like, no, like, uh, <laughs> weekends and they're like oh you're bored on the so they kind of put it together on the little things i threw out and that weekend <laughs> they called me to hang out so then that's how i really like Aww. made my first like like move to make friends outside of like practice or classroom or anything uh, like that so that's that was, amazing that is i'm bored I weekend yeah. i mean yeah. you got all the necessities in there i for mean sure. at the time it was nerve-wracking you know Aww. i was like i don't want to sound stupid but like i have to ask because i'm tired of you know like i don't know how to you know, yeah. go yeah. About <laughs> this, you know? so uh, that was that was a big moment for me for sure now it's interesting that you know sports connected you to friends and the culture and everything like that because um AK was on the our podcast not too long ago, and he said the exact same thing coming from Cameroon. And it was interesting because he was talking about how, like, there at one point he had to learn football, and he was like, "I'm just playing like see ball, hit ball, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. because I I was still learning the game." And he was like, "Even into high school, I was still kind of learning the ins and outs in the game." Did you have something similar, kind of having a um, a soccer background, but having to learn the game of football too? Yeah. Um 
just just the way I had a Korean friend that I was in all the classrooms with. Right. I had a Korean Korean friend on the football team, and um, it, he was like translating stuff for me. Oh, cool! Like, wow. During practice, like if coach would be like, "Hey, you got to do this," uh -huh. then he would explain to me what he said so that I can go and do it until I started picking up English. So wow. before then, like he would explain to me, he's like, "Hey, do this, do that," but he yeah. would translate things for me. And um, that's how I picked up. But um, yeah, I mean, I was naturally good at kicking, mm -hmm. but I loved playing football. You know, right? Like, you know, middle school I was playing all, everything, and high school I almost went to a private school to just kick, but I mm -hmm. chose not to because I wanted to play with my friends that I grew up mm -hmm. playing football with, so I can play. You know, practice and play offense, defense, and you know, kicking was just something that came more naturally to me. That's interesting that you bring that up because I believe. And again, no one quote me on this, but I believe <laughs> that Marquise, we were talking to him maybe a year ago or so. And yeah, he said, so. he was like, uh, if Youngway was not a kicker, he could go out and be a DB or a safety. Like he said that about you. And I was like, that's awesome. And then of course, looking back at some of your high school stuff, like you played m a multitude of positions. Like what you said, you weren't just kicking. Yeah. Um, do you think that you could go out there and play um, uh, safety I, I mean, or DB or anything? I think there's a reason why I was uh, just kicking in college. <laughs> 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 but uh, but um, I definitely enjoy it for sure. Yeah. I don't know if I... I know for a fact I can't play out here. <laughs> just maybe it's just zone, just like sit back you know, or <laughs> something like that. But um, that's why I loved kicking off. You know, kickoff mm -hmm. was something where I can run down the field and feel like I'm doing something other than kicking a ball. Right. You know, because, um, you know, we go out there, take three steps, kick a ball, and that's right. really it, right? So it's not really that stereotypical football physicality. So when I'm on that kickoff team, I was like, man, I'm running down the field, and I'm going to make something happen because the only time I get to do something <laughs> other right. than kicking. You can go hit someone. Yeah, <laughs> and then now we uh, we got Bradley, so I'm not doing that either. <laughs> Send Bradley out there. <laughs> No need to run. Uh, another sport that we've noticed that you're pretty good at, uh, there's like a very serious ping pong oh, competition yeah. in the Falcons locker room. And yeah. there seems to be varsity JV and then like a ninth grade team. Uh, and Young yeah. Way is on the varsity list. Yes, right. For sure. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, I, I think I'm kind of good. And then like, I was like, I could definitely like compete with those guys. And then you watch Young Way and Anthony Ferkster play yeah, ping pong Ferk and you're like, really good. no, I would get skunked every single time. <laughs> hey, um, there is so much spin going on there. It's yeah, heavy competition. It's uh, yeah, we need to clear the whole like half the locker room. <laughs> like 20 feet behind the table you know but uh yeah i mean i've been i've been going through a little slump for has been uh for has been uh, beating me a lot but it's okay you know? I, that's about the only guy who can who can take well isn't probably. it like ferk is like number one this is what i've heard from uh -huh. um casey hayward so he loves to play as well and talk um, trash about and, it right yes and lorenzo of course but it's like the top of the pyramid is ferk apparently and then it's you and felipe yeah, I think that board is very subjective. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know who put that together. Uh, I try not to argue with them, you know. We'll, we'll see how Let the play goes. speak for itself, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, we did a, like, JV tournament, varsity tournament, and, like a, you know, freshman team tournament, <laughs> like that, but... We'll see uh, when we do that again. You do have to keep your head on a swivel in that locker room yeah. because yeah. The, those ping pong balls are flying around. Yeah, we do have a rule. It's like, you, you know, it's interference then you've got to play that point over again, so. <laughs> that's definitely fair that is so fun yeah so let, let's fast forward just a little bit you know you you go in from high school to georgia southern and yep. the chargers opportunity and then you're kind of working your way back to get this opportunity which you've obviously made the most of is there a way to describe what that period was like when maybe you were kind of uncertain about how your career arc was going to go were you like I asked couch I, surfing. Yeah, right? that's what <laughs> that's we were what talking earlier. Like, I was like, should I ask him if he was like couch surfing? Because I know that's something that like, you know, if you freak, don't, like try out circuits. Right. Stuff, yeah. Or, that's something that like and guys live together. Mm -hmm. Like it, what was your experience like? Um, so after after the Chargers deal, I stayed out in San Diego. Mm -hmm. I linked up with John Carney. Um, he kicked in the league for twenty four mm -hmm. years and uh he was training a bunch of guys out there. So I stayed out there and I tried to learn the game. Um, when I first came out of college, for me, it was kind of, you know, what AK was saying, you know, see ball, get ball type mm -hmm. of deal. And for me, it was see ball, hit ball. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get into the craft of kicking, you know. Um, but I realized as a pro, you got to pay attention to the details and you got to work on your craft and you mm -hmm. got to continue to work to perfect that craft. But I didn't really 
have those details down yet. Um, so when I linked up with John, he taught me a lot, not only how to, you know, um, work on your craft, but also like as a pro, what situationally, like, what do you pay attention to what your routines are like? And there was just so much that went into it. Um, so I learned a lot from him, but also I, um, stayed at Airbnbs pretty really? much for like six, seven months while I was out there. Wow. And, uh, I pr probably wasn't the smartest with my money at the time, <laughs> <laughs> but from what I got from the chargers, I spent it all on like Airbnb and pretty much, you know, like food and training fees out there. So when I ran out of money, I moved back home mm. to my mom's in Georgia. And that's when I was like feeling like I was hitting like that bottom because mm -hmm. I was like, man, I feel like I'm in high school because I'm back at my mom's, mm -hmm. but I don't have school. You right. know, I'm not yeah. working. And I know a bunch of guys that got a job and they train on the side. And But I, for me, it didn't feel right. I was like, I can only do this now. Like I can always get a job when I'm 45, 50 years old, mm -hmm. but I can't kick a ball then. So I'm just going to put all my energy into this now. So I just, you know, made a routine, you know, things that I learned from John, I had to really put it to work. Um, I wrote down my plans, you know, deep down to the detail of what I'm going to do Monday through Sunday. And I just stay ready for those workouts. Mm -hmm. And um, when I, as I said to myself, as long as I'm getting calls for workouts, I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, there were some, you know, tough times where it'd be in the off season where it'd be like three months go by and you didn't get a single call. And I'm like, you know, what am I doing with my life when all your friends are kind of getting a job and moving on right. and moving on, uh, you know, getting an apartment and all that stuff. And I'm just still sitting in my mom's, you know, lifting, kicking, kind of waiting for that call. Um, that was definitely tough, but uh, it helped me become who I am today for sure. Mm -hmm. um, because that really like fired me up where I'm like, you know what, when I, when I make it, like, I, I don't want to be back in that position. Uh -huh. So for me, that was a, a tough time for me for sure. Right. But it must make this where you just signed a five year extension, Yeah, five year extension that, that, I mean, pretty we're, good. <laughs> we're like getting all deep here, but I mean like that must've been a real moment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely thankful, um, for all the people to help me get to this position. Mm -hmm. Um, the opportunity that I got here and once I came in here all the people that kind of helped me mm -hmm. get through that first year you know back into the league after two years you know that was tough um but just helping me you know take advantage of that opportunity I'm um, thankful for everybody that kind of helped me um but I try to always look back at that time and that's what kind of keeps me going right um that's those those days where I'm like man what am I doing you know um mm -hmm. That's, that's my kind of motivation walking out that game day tunnel and i'm like i'm not going back to that couch you know i'm just uh -huh. gonna lock in more so oh i love that i'm, I'm getting i'm no i'm gonna run here. through a wall now d it, when you're sitting there and you're going through all of that the i feel like the anticipation of like waiting for a call is like very heavy did it feel that way where you were like you're talking about going months without getting a call and then finally getting a call is there like that anticipation feeling like within that time period where you're actively trying to get back in the league. So it, it, it was like phases. It was like a year and a half, two years of like, you know, waiting for that call. Mm -hmm. So the first few ones I'm like, man, all right, here we go. Like here are the calls. And as I kept going, I think I had like 20 plus workouts before I signed here. And, wow. and I was like, like towards the end of it, I was like, I'm, killing these workouts i'm crushing it i feel good i feel like i'm ready to go but it was always like hey uh you did a great today but there was something mm. um so towards the end of it i was fired up i was like man i don't know what else i gotta do you know like you can crush the workout mm. but you don't have enough experience so they're mm. saying no um so towards the end i was getting frustrated but um that definitely helped me become better as well because that made me do push even farther to mm -hmm. be like hey all right let's do even better than you know so um you know it, it went through phases when i was getting calls for workouts and stuff that's awesome and i feel like you're such an inspiration for a lot of people but there was a moment in training camp that i thought was one of the coolest moments there was a fan of yours that i believe had traveled all the way from korea and got to meet you what was that experience like because i i didn't know about that until someone had posted a video and i was like Oh my gosh, that's freaking awesome! Yeah, um, I still 
to me that's weird because i'm like not <laughs> not weird but like what do you mean he came to see me like i don't feel <laughs> yeah. like um you know yeah. i'm just over here kicking the ball you know i'm just trying to you know have fun playing the game and then um you know it's surreal to me that like i can have the some influence you know mm -hmm. and to see um people um you know support me and especially kids that mm -hmm. kind of say hey i look up to you you know like mm -hmm. blah blah and i'm an inspiration to some like that's crazy to me still and um but i understand that you know i have a platform to kind of tell my story and i'm not the first one to go through something like that or the last one so um i love to just share my journey and share my story so if i can just reach one kid or you know influence one kid to push themselves to you know um, out of their comfort zone to say like hey what are you doing on the weekend you yeah. know um to make a friend or mm -hmm. something like that so i think that would be a That'd be pretty cool. Just, uh, mm -hmm. just a couple more things as we're wrapping up here. Um, one question that I have to ask, which, which is not serious. Specialists <laughs> often spend a oh, lot yes. of time at practice. I'm sure you've gotten this question before, <laughs> where you, you can only rep so much, right? right? Eventually, it just looks like you and Liam and Bradley like chilling, just chilling right? out there. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are the conversations like? Is there a level of boredom? I don't know. Give us some insight on what's happening on on the specialist yeah, field. Yeah, so uh, we do have a lot of time at practice where we're not <laughs> kicking or punting. Um, I feel like you don't want to overwork, you no, know, the, I mean, the, the you same muscles. I mean, yeah, you can't, you know, kick all day for three hours, you right. know. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it, we we do chill a lot you know, <laughs> on our on our field. Um, a lot of uh, visualization, uh, mental reps, I call them. So um, try to, you know, lock in while i'm working but also um you know i guess you know the trick shot that i did in college yeah i always told people that i had too much time at practice that i didn't <laughs> do anything. that's why i came up with this shit, that's so. why you can do yeah, that yeah i mean i won't be back flipping now but you know, <laughs> that's great i feel like you talk about mental reps in my head i'm just picturing like liam like beside you just going hey man you have three seconds <laughs> to kick the ball. Like that's just in my head. That's kind of like what I'm envision yeah. visualizing. <laughs> All right. Now we've reached the portion uh, at the end of the podcast. We Everyone's ask the same five questions to favorite everybody. Section. It's kind of a rapid fire thing. Are, are you ready? Sure. Here we go. Uh, we already kind of talked about some of your top kicks, but yeah. I, I don't know if there was ever the favorite play of your career. I don't know if there's you kicked a game winner in high school or something at Georgia Southern. Anything stand out? Ooh. Um, my first year here, when I was running down on kickoff, and uh, ball popped out into my chest, and I like <laughs> got a fumble recovery <laughs> <laughs> for sure, <laughs> by far. I'm wow! Like, you know, I remember. It's like, what know, happened yeah, here? Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Uh, long snapper at the time josh yeah he was like i've been waiting to do that for eight years and you've been here for six games <laughs> and just got that so for sure that was uh that was one of the top ones that's it's like how did i get this where did it come from <laughs> um question number two what tv show have you been binge watching uh i don't really binge watch shows because after you know practices and meetings mm -hmm. i kind of tired kind of want to sit there and just put something on and not really pay attention right you mm -hmm. know um I feel that. But I just put Family Guy on and just kind of lay there on my phone or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm very excited to ask this question. Um, what is your favorite traditional Korean meal? Ooh. Well, I do go to a Korean barbecue like once a week. Do love Korean yeah, barbecue. Yeah, I just recently is, went last week. It was yeah. fantastic. And it, it switches for me like time to time. It's like I'll be, I'll be in a mood to eat, eat something different every week. So... But I feel like I do crave crave more Korean food the older I get. I feel really? Like. Yeah, it's, it's I don't know. It's weird. I I heard that some people <laughs> told me that when I was growing up, like middle school, high school, and I was like going away from Korean food. Like I don't want to eat that, you know, whatever. Yeah. And they're like, just wait, it's gonna come mm -hmm. back to you. And I'm just like, they're right. They're right. Here oh, it comes. I love that. There's this uh place in Duluth called Nine Two Nine Korean Barbecue, yeah. and they do a like um some type of I think it's like japchae or something like yeah. that. And it's spicy. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. You'll have to get it when, yeah. if you ever go. That's my plug. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the falcon that you hang out with the most? Well, we just talked about the specialist. Right. right? Probably so, the specialist. You know, for sure. Liam and um, 
Liam, Bradley, and Bo, who uh, definitely uh, have more time together. <laughs> right, more when time people together. Are in <laughs> offensive, defensive meetings, and we're just playing ping pong in the locker room. <laughs> oh, man. And finally, the last one um, What is your biggest pet peeve? Ooh. I don't know. Oh, it's a tough one. I know. Yeah. Everybody, everybody has to like think about this one. I know. One. Yeah. And everybody's had, everybody kind of gets, uh, We've had a lot of different answers. I yeah. will say that, yeah. Everything from bad drivers to uh, people that chew with their mouth open. Yeah, I think. people yeah. who say salmon instead of salmon. Yeah. That was an interesting one. That's a big one. Uh, we can check back with you on that one. All right. Get it before it comes out. <laughs> young, young, young Wei Koo, thank you so much for stopping by. And thanks to everyone for downloading and listening. Please, of course, rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff with the Atlanta Falcons Podcast Network. And we will be coming to you next week with another awesome guest. 